hopefully I got this working correctly. Alright. About to start second day stream of creating a relief image of two children playing chess. I believe they're children, but two figures playing chess. Pretty much uh, an allegory of life being life uh, is a chess match. But I won't get too deep into that. The more the main focus right now that I'm going to be working on is this facial structure and when I get to a certain point or when I get satisfied with uh, this area here then I will move on to the headpiece so let's get started focusing on one side I'm not too much worried about the other side because it's going to be sunk into uh, the wall itself so, but there will be a little bit of detailing it's just so you know when uh, the viewer looks at it at a certain angle they will at least see some detailing here so I won't be completely uh, ne neglected as far as all this here, let's check. All right, I think I am close to adding a little bit more voxels. So let's knock this down to one. And I'm gonna save. Let's see. Yeah, we have more voxels to work with. So, <clears throat> so let's go ahead. Uh, here and add the crease right up in there. And yes, I still have this icosphere inside the eyeball. I'm using it as a guide just so I uh, know how far deep I'm going into the lid. pieces here. thing about remeshing you know whenever you remesh some parts you will have to kind of re-detail so, so 
like this here. I need to re, re detail the nostril. Have it. Make sure that there's an actual crevice inside the nostril. that back in there it's probably soften it a little bit but you know the, again the remeshing and I think for this eyelid uh, bring this back out so So yeah, I'm, I'm just continuously tinkering with the face. And then this part here, let me zoom in. This part here looks like some sort of potential face tattoo design. So I wanna see if I could just emulate that you know, same reverse I'll go around and pull it out some something like that and then I'll remesh and I'll go ahead and flatten it a bit and my flatten is pretty strong so I'll keep it as is for now unless it gets to be a little too much for me Uh, the tattoo is it's pretty deep it's very deep and very deep in there but I'm also going to need to push it in some too so I think I'll do that right now it's probably going to be a mixture of grabbing grabbing it but also smoothing it too so I'll try smoothing it first could smooth it in and sometimes smoothing it kind of pushes it down but also creates this problem too I'm actually kind of thinking about going to the gym again, continue to work on my health and exercise. It's hard to explain. It's hard to explain, you know, at a certain point that sometimes when I go to the gym and work out, my mind kind of just clears itself. You know, it's just, I'm not even worrying about the outside world, not worrying about opinions and unnecessary thoughts. I just work out 
lifting weights, cardio. It's like a self meditation almost. Pretty hard to describe, but I think having that type of outlet, I believe, relieves a lot of unnecessary stress, you know, unnecessary stress of simply just the world itself. But, you know, that's going to be definitely on my to-do list later, later in the evening. But right now, this is my other bit of therapy right here, too. Or work slash multiple things. I want to get this. I want to get this actually looking a little bit better. Day happened. Hope you guys had an enjoyable Valentine's Day. I understand some people, you know, they spent their that time alone. But you know, I would say that just because you're doing things alone doesn't mean that you have to be lonely, or rather, be in isolation or idle. I figure some of the, the best medicine is simply just to be active, see different things, experience new things, discover many wonders of well, what the world, the good parts of the world has have to offer. Not not any of that stuff from social media. To be honest, a lot of it's fake. A lot of, a lot of it's really just fake. The more you realize that, the uh, more clarity will uh, reveal itself. So this part, I want to, let me see if I can do a, a pull down, so yeah, there we go. So it's a little bit of a pull down. And there you go. Like that. So, next thing, if I'm ever so daring, I'll go ahead and work on the ear next. So, I'm gonna add in another sphere. I think UV sphere. Let's see where is that. I really should start using the cursor. Which I'll probably... Yeah, I really should start using the cursor next time. So the ear will be about here. Yeah, let's go back into sculpting. I'm not even going to do the subdivision stuff. I think that's just additional work alright so I'm going to expand this blow it up some so right, right up in there and move it it's probably at a distance so it's going to be like probably that it's time to go and do a little bit of stretching stretching and contorting and all that good stuff but maybe not just yet let's go ahead and do a, let's flatten it so I'm gonna flatten it some and now I'm going to pull it 
And you know, when you have enough voxels, you just really just start thinking about like you're working with clay. You know, anyone that have used ceramics, it's, the idea is mostly similar to that. So all I, all I really did was just grab some digital clay and started molding the ear to a desirable shape. And now that it's taking shape, I can just go and continue building it up, putting it together. And you know, you, you have all these tools to work with. I don't, I'm still at this day not adept to using all the tools and a lot of times I kind of go to the ones that I feel comfortable in using uh, but you know that's that's all artists they have their own styles and their own uh, way of doing things there's nothing wrong with that that's that's what makes uh, each person unique the trick is uh, finding someone that appreciates your uniqueness Even if you don't, it's always good to have self-appreciation. That definitely goes a long way. Alright. So, let's go and push that in. Do another remesh. Let's go and draw out the, the detail or or the carve out what we want. So with this ear, you know, and there's the little loop in that direction. So we're gonna go ahead and carve it in there. And it's kind of a secondary part that loops up in there and then you got this portion and uh, everything else on this is a bit suck it in so we're gonna go ahead and push it in there and of course you see the other end of the head that's fine. Do the same thing up here. Yeah, can't wait to get this 3D printed. I wonder if it, I wonder if some of my colleagues have seen the movie Megan. Yeah, I, I heard some mixed things about that film, but I'm curious of take, taking a look at it. You know, when I have time, if it's still in theaters, of course. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover that up. So push this in like so. I think I'll do a bit of a remesh. So I'm gonna grab this and kind of 
manipulate it some. to get two monitors you know one for streaming one for doing the work but that'll be in the future something that you know usually I have to take extra care of time and uh, you know once I get a general shape I try to flatten out various parts that way you know when you do further detailing it will somewhat stay relatively in shape is because you have this part here and then you have this it slopes inside so I want to emulate that and I believe to do that is to add in or expand the clay or in, draw more in so there's at least some type of level push it in like that way that way when I do work on more of the ear I oh, can't really see all that you know, there, there will actually be a little uh, a hole or crevice that I could work with Excuse me, I 
press the animation button. Okay. That might be too much, but it might be a little too much, but uh, we, can, we can still fix it. We'll just bring it, we'll just bring some of that back. Save a lot, save often, because it may cr crash on you, and uh, you don't want to lose a whole lot of work.
think I might take a stab at the headpiece now. I think I might do that. Now, I could go ahead and probably do another voxel. Actually, actually, you know what? I will add in more voxels for the face, and then I'll do the headpiece. So let's go ahead and work on that. So is that one? We're going to do zero point seven. Now this could crash, but I'm willing to take that chance. So zero point seven. Let's see, all right. So let's do 0 0.5. So I think usually when you try to do like 0 0.1, then that's when uh, things get really rough. Okay, I'm not gonna go any further than that. Yeah, that's super dense, super duper dense, but uh, I'm fine with that my computer can handle it all right so like this here I want to go ahead and start here as well. Because it's not doing like almost all the way around, but it is giving it some definition. And I'm mainly just doing this so I could get rid of uh, the jagginess and pixelated areas of uh, this face here. And if I have to do a little bit of smoothing, then so be it. I'll do that, but I'll go, I'll go right back behind and then um, draw it in and the next time the next time that I draw it in the, the voxel detail should make it look more in higher resolution and less jagginess or pixelation. own form of smoothing but also keep a little bit of the definition that you drew in so it's, it's more, more of a, a mix of both and, uh, the eye socket is something I want to make really pop out
gonna do the smoothing again on here because gonna save this and I'm gonna give it the same treatment around the lip area I might yeah, I might draw it in a little bit more but the areas that I want will be the bottom lip area right here a bit of flattening and then touch up with the smoothing so I was like I kind of flatten first and now smooth it Here, you know, flatten again, touching the, the tail end of the bottom lip, and then same thing with the top lip here, and then I smooth again. Kind of just push it in a bit more if I want to have it pushed in a bit more and then smooth it and then smooth it over and then push it in and there's a little bit of a back and forth. And now the next part will be doing the upper lip on the bottom where I'm kind of pushing it outward and then smoothing it around. Being mindful of my pressure on my tablet pen. And I smooth it in. And because you can already see it having a more refined shape. So I do that. Same thing again, flatten, you know, flattening it up, flattening up. Flatten one area here, then kind of flatten, but coming from from here and then starting here. So then I flatten, and then I start here and come up here, and this is also giving me this uh, nice little crease. So now I go and smooth, get rid of some of the crease, and I smooth again. Same thing here. And I think I'll smooth out, smooth out this here, and then and uh, it looks like the lip is looking pretty good. Now there's might be a bit of a I don't know. Usually, normally you might have like a little crease this part so I guess I'll go ahead and draw it out I'll draw it out and then maybe even push it in some like so save that so coming together I believe yes all right I want to probably work on the chin area or maybe the nose uh, let's let's keep it moving since we did the lips let's uh, work on the nose next so for the nose make sure I capture the, the, the definition separate various parts making sure you know it's a proper pushed out nose and do this right here too push that out and then get that in there push that out get that in there and 
it's basically just kind of providing a flow and also knowing a little bit of how a nose is shaped and how it forms together around like you know you have this part here and kind of goes like a circular motion so now I'm gonna go ahead and crease it in there with a bit of a drawing like, like that that's a bit much but that's okay so now that we have that in there so then we go behind it and flatten and push the creases together There and now we, you know, we got a nice, nice crease. Probably a bit much, so you know, smooth it out some. Get rid of that. And then smooth out the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really tight crease. So let's continue with. Let's continue with uh, going on the bridge of the nose too much but just enough so Sorry about that. Ah, I guess I did a little bit of an exhale. You, you guys didn't need to hear that. That's just my, my muscles uh, constricting, expanding, you know, whenever you, you flex and follow up with a yarn. save that let's take a small step back so uh, do a little bit of that cheekbone smooth smooth these areas out some There's no sack under it, you know, so that'll 
hold it in place. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Squeeze it in there. Squeeze it in there. Yeah, crease. Do a little smoothing on top of that. Smooth on top of that there too. Just kind of just push it in there like so. All right. Now for this part here, this part here, do the same thing. But we're probably gonna smooth this, these areas here first. closer to the skin and it shouldn't be as pronounced as before. of how many what sort of voxels we're working with with this ear and let's match that with the same as the other one so it's like 0 0.5 and then remesh that so now this should also be 0 0.05 Super Bowl was lit, but you know, I missed out on watching that. But yeah, c congrats to uh, KC.
work on this again because I did too much uh, other method. So let's go ahead and just cut this in, bring this out. So is inflating all the way around. Okay. So with inflation, I can hopefully have it lined up on the air area. So I feel confident, excuse me, I feel confident, confident enough to now work on the headpiece. So the next thing I'm going to do is go back at the object. We're going to leave that there for the time being and do add in another sphere. So I could do this or I could perhaps go another route such as having it more shaped around the head using a, using a masking tool and to be honest I think I might do just that so let's go back into uh, to this sphere this sculpt and we're going to do a bit of a mask so the way this will work once I find it Is that we're going to go and right and draw it and draw it in and make sure that it's strong. Yeah, we're going to draw this in. So this is 
sure I get the, the angle for it too, because that's important. So I'm going to go ahead and start it right there. too deep into the ear and then I'll fix that later and then we're gonna go over to this end it's probably like more of like this and there's like some type of twist and turn that up right there. Yeah, it's definitely going to be far more intricate, but I just mainly want to get the general shape down. And I'll just draw, just draw this in for good measure. So now once I have this, this the next thing I'm going to do is fill in all the spots. a bit bigger for this part here. fill this in and you know you got little spots here and there you can clean that up that won't be an issue but let's go all the way around Go ahead and do 
this. Chop it off like that. Make this more circle like that. coming together so I'm gonna save this take a look at this briefly go over here and do give it the same treatment have that more pronounced cut this have this a little bit more in there like so let's take a look at it again gap around the ear area looks like that and let's put this in here let's put a gap like that and I can only imagine in the days of the Renaissance and Baroque and Rococo period when they had to do sculptures and reliefs the amount of planning that they, they had to do on top of the amount of patience that's that comes with you know doing such works let alone if they even had the room for error you know well, you know once once you put a a mark down that mark stays there so they you know, I could only imagine they, they had to do do their work with a lot of conviction Admire that, especially when you have you know, nobles and people of high authoritative p positions. You know, they commission you, but they don't see how the sausage is made, so to speak. You know, rightfully so. They're just there for the end process. And the, the end process is a nice thing to look at. But, you know, when they also see what's going on in between, you can say, you know, they appreciate it a bit, bit more. Kind of like how with uh, behind the scenes, watching movies and you look at the second, second CD of how this movie was made and the, the plethora of artists and sound effects and 3d artists that came together as a team to you know create this, this awesome motion picture you know you you appreciate all the manpower and hours and work that they you know put in put in their craft just to get to the end you know there's always there's always something to at least appreciate the journey so they say so in a way that's what I'm doing right now I'm appreciating the journey while also creating so now that we have this portion here this is what I'm going to do first I'm going to save then I'm going to go into mask and let's sharpen this up so sharpen this up there we go I'll sharpen it up one more time so now that it's sharpened we're now gonna go ahead and mask extract and then say yes on that so now that it's extracted we're gonna go ahead and There it is. 
this this is the part that we want and what I also want to double check is yeah it, it even kept uh, the same voxel size but um, what we're gonna do is we're going to work a, work a little bit in reverse let's start with let's start with nine we're gonna start with nine and bring it out some because ooh hold on yeah that, that might have been a bad idea let's see that might have been a bad idea or maybe the whole thing the whole thing is not doing what it's supposed to do let's check that let's check that again that's what we're gonna do remesh yeah mm, why did it why does it do that that's curious all right let's see let's see what we need to do to fix this not subdivision surface I don't want to do that but maybe we, if we could solidify it so so give it a little bit of solidification Ooh. extra dare double dare all right mm. nice it actually it actually held itself together that's good that's very good all right so we're gonna slap this bad boy back on his head boop should be changing my pivots but I haven't actually no we yeah we, let's go ahead and change our change our origin to geometry here we go origin to geometry origin to geometry all right there I don't have to be go zooming in on that anymore save again and the headpiece is part hey thank you I appreciate it um, it has been a lot of trial and error and that's like one particular way of you know finding out how to you know, solve that issue I'm pretty sure there's other methods of uh, finding you know, a way to you know get that strange you know topology issue as far as he's the solidified modifier but currently right now that seems like the, the one way to make it work all right so uh, this uh, headpiece I'm just being careful about it um, I guess I'm now going to go ahead and expand it some I might actually do another solidify since I already have it there as is so yeah let's go ahead and do another solidify back 
again. Do a scope. I got this little thing here of the mask, so it's time to clear the mask. I don't need it anymore. I'm gonna go ahead and save. Voxels, because I'm gonna draw it, draw it in. Pretty much drawing when I when I see. And start 3d printing this it will capture all the detail you know, especially you know when you start applying like layer lines like say 0 0.8 0 0.6 it'll capture all of that and the layer lines will make it pop really well but you know I'm not being a little ahead of myself so I, let me just go ahead and just focus on this portion because we do have a long we do have a long ways to go Um, I'm using my uh, Wacom tablet. It's a Wacom 2. I got like around like a decade ago, and it's, it has been, I guess you might say, old faithful ever since. Thought about using a Cintiq, but you know, I was like, yeah. I mean, if if my Wacom's doing the job, so I'll, I'll just keep what I have. Probably maybe one, every once in a while I might use a mouse, but right now it's my tablet. Yeah, I um, I equate uh, sculpting similar to I guess traditional ceramics. Um, I guess the process, as far as like grabbing clay and shaping it, uh, kind of parallels with you know if you just have like actual clay in real life and shaping it with your hands. So with this is you know with the addition of adding voxels, which is you know the more voxels you have, uh, the more you're able to shape the clay. You know, but at the potential expense of your machine you know you have to be careful with that but you know outside of that you know if uh if you're familiar with ceramics and or clay sculpting then digital sculpting uh you know it's right right up uh, people's alley now it does take a bit of time to get used to used to all the tools like like for instance you know you say if you like have your grab tool just to demonstrate 
you know, you can just grab grab portions of of your clay, and then if you need to carve something out, that, let's see, this is your draw sharp tool to car carve things in, in your clay, you know, various pieces, so just carve it in there. And what I'm using right now is to draw another form of a draw tool as far as like kind of like adding additions. So you know, think of it, think of this as far as like um, extruding parts of your clay if you want to do details. While this one is uh, creating, drawing in parts. And funny enough, these could be reversed, but I guess Blender decided to have them separately. And you know, I'm very sure there's a reason for it, but you know, that's just one thing I, I've noticed that I found interesting. Uh, currently right now, I'm just focusing on these details around this headpiece. And the other nice thing with the tablet is I could also control the pressure sensitivity. So some parts could be light and other parts I could like really dig into it. part of this headpiece and then we'll take a break because it's almost that time for uh, to handle some uh, other chores and duties not to mention to head to the gym too because I, I want to at least get some time into that too you know like I said earlier it's always good to uh work out and treat your body right. So let me see. Let me take a step back. So there's a I have part of that here. Have that connected. There's also this portion here. I think that is actually right up there. So I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this out, get rid of it. Because that's not what I want. I, don't, I want it. I want it above here. future I'm probably looking to get a second monitor you know, if I'm going to be doing more of this stuff I'm always going to have a second monitor on hand that'll be on my to-do list Down here, you know, there might 
be something circular in this spot. of African patterns and designs, you know, like I used to do when I did some uh, 3D printed work of uh, Adika symbols, you know, drawing, you know, printing out a couple of Sankofas, you know, that was an experience of its own, huh? so maybe I should check out some references later on that might help me uh, produce more additional designs, especially for this headpiece. For those uh, taking a look at this small recap, this is going to be a, a relief style print, and that's also explaining why I'm only doing this side here and not so much on this side because all this here is going to be sucked in, and a relief is pretty much uh, a sculpture that is has a design that's extruding out of a, a wall. So I'm using this image as uh, the relief itself taking these two figures the chest pieces all of that is going to be extruding outward when I 3D print this so you know for those wondering why he has a melted face from Robocop that's why alright First impressions, I, I thought about maybe doing it in a form of, uh, you know, taking a string and doing a bit of lattice work, but I'd rather have this be one whole piece. Maybe later I might do, I might do the, the lattice idea, but right now let's let's block out the shape. So I'm gonna go ahead, go back, create another shape. Uh, sphere. Or, yeah. Yeah, Let, let's keep things all spherical. <clears throat> go back into sculpt. And we're gonna go ahead and move this over here. And expand it. And we're gonna do this. Because it has 
a, a mohawk impression to it. And that's a, another added note. Uh, when you're sculpting and you, you're taking a uh, primitive shape, um, anytime you're doing any like movements, expansion, uh, scaling, any of that, any of that whatsoever, do it in sculpting mode. Do not do it in object mode or edit mode. Do all that in sculpting mode because if you, oh, well, I'll do a, a brief example. So say if I have another sphere, right? And I'm going to say, all right, I got the sphere and I'm going to go ahead and expand it. So right now I'm in object mode. I'm, I'm just doing this, right? I'm expanding it and I do this, right? Okay. So now I'm going to go Maybe do this here. Now I'm going to go into object mode and look at this error. Object has non-uniform scale. Sculpting may be unpredictable. And why, why it says that? Well, if you try to do any type of sculpting, you notice the cursor is kind of, you know, wonky looking. It's not like an actual circle. Whereas if you look at this piece here, since I did all my resizing inside sculpt mode, my cursor is actually, let me make it bigger, it's a full circle. You know, it's that, and that's what you want. You want that. You do not want to have your cursor being all oblong and lopsided or weird looking. Like this. So, you know, this can cause problems. So, you know, you know, whenever you're doing your resizing and everything, do it inside scope mode. That that was one thing I had to learn learn along the way. So, hopefully that that helps. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in, in here and expand it a bit more. Now that I have this, I figured that I'll also shape this. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, go back into scope mode and let's go ahead and do a bit of uh, remeshing. Let's check the remesh. Okay, that's, that's decent enough. So now we are now going to start shaping this. Just smooth everything out so it's now faceted it up and gonna loosely emulate the shape of the hair that I'm looking at.
I got this shape in. I'm gonna remesh again and continue applying the shape. And of course, you know, I probably had to do a, a few more additions. And, subtractions and vice versa and, you know repeating the process over again but I think once I have the general shape that I want Feeling the results, you know. I think I could work with this. I think I could work with this because then I could add more detail and actually really get like you know these little hoops here.
Yeah, it's uh, very wavy. Because originally I was thinking about probably just creating uh, splines and create the floats that way. But, you know, I still wanted to give this uh, a try just to see how it looks. I, but, uh, yeah, I think the, the splat method, I'll, I'll, I'll try it next, probably later in the evening. But, uh, yeah, it is almost uh, that time, so I think I'm going to call it here. But, uh, you know, for those that stuck around, thank you. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be a multi day process. You know, it's going to have all this whole composition, and this will be 3D printed. So, again, thank you for watching, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.